For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. This is Start News Global. I am Amitabh Bravi. Our guest on the gist today is Vice Admiral Dinesh Tripathi. He is the Chief of Personnel with the Indian Navy, and the topic we are discussing is Agni Path. Admiral Tripathi, thank you so much for your time, sir. I know all of you have been very busy over the last few days, and like I was telling the Air Officer Chief and Personnel also for the last two years, possibly. We all now know generally the contours of the Agni Path. Could you explain to us how it's been tailored specifically for the Indian Navy? Uh, thank you, Amitabh, first of all, for getting me on your show. It is a pleasure. Uh, you know, this uh, scheme has been in uh, deliberations and discussions for the past uh, two years, I can say. And uh, whatever uh, was announced uh, day before yesterday by Ornamal Rakshamantri and the three service chiefs is a result of all that uh, which, which happened. And therefore, uh, I would say that all services got uh, adequate time to think, reflect, and then formulate as to what is to come and then prepare themselves for uh, the, the years ahead. Uh, more importantly, for the next six months, Navy was no different. And therefore, what we did was that uh, while the contours of the scheme uh, were being built, uh, there were some changes. Uh, we also changed as to how we will manage. Uh, as you would fully understand, the for any scheme to be successful, the first step is a change management. Mm -hmm. And now we are going into this transformative domain where the recruitment is going to be done in a totally uh, different manner. So as a service, certainly we, uh, we are up to it, we are uh, ready to go. In Navalese we say we are stood to. And uh, what we have done is, uh, Antaab, that uh, both at the Naval Headquarters as also in the Training Command and our basic training uh, establishment that is the uh, INS Chilka in Odisha. Uh, we have uh, taken steps that when these Agnivirs start coming, what kind of uh, facilities are required, what kind of training curriculum required, which is uh, still being tailor-made uh, with a view that when they go on to the ships, after uh, you know the mandatory training, they uh, straight away become uh, the, a part of the fighting force. And uh, therefore, as I said uh, to you earlier, uh, the Indian Navy is uh, ready for this uh, uh, the policy. What are the benefits for the Indian Navy in particular? And you were talking about you know ready for operations within a short period of time, uh, combat capability. How will that be affected? Uh, Antav, uh, <clears throat> we are very clear in the Navy that uh, the operational readiness and the combat efficiency of our units uh, are non-negotiable. And therefore, our focus has always been and will always be that our units are always ready to go into the harm's way if required. And therefore, uh, we are uh, taking steps for smooth integration of uh, these Agni uh, whenever they pass out from their uh, boot camp training so that uh, they are given the kind of uh, you know jobs which they can do uh, effectively, efficiently and the senior lot who are already serving in the Navy they will uh, do the heavy burden or they will do the uh, uh, tasks which, are, which they, are, they have been trained for and therefore uh, I believe that this uh, excellent uh, combination of youthfulness which, will, uh, which these Agnivis will uh, bring in uh, with the experienced hands, uh, not only the sailors but also the officer corps uh, will uh, combine together 
to ensure that the operational readiness of uh, the fleets and our units not are not compromised at all. How do you visualize when it's the incentive that is given? There are several incentives that are given for the Agnivis, whether it's skills, whether it's uh, training, whether it's you know if, even in financial resources after they finish. Uh, but when it's not permanent, is that a disincentive? Do you think for the numbers of people who would want to be recruited, and also a disincentive that four years what are we doing? We have to we have to look for a job again. I think this is a very apt question. I think uh, anybody who is uh, not uh, privy to the sure. scheme will have. I am an eternal optimist, mm -hmm. and despite uh, certain apprehensions from various quarters, I see that uh, uh, some of those may be misplaced. Why do I say that? Uh, first of all, uh, this scheme provides an opportunity. to larger number of youth of our country both men and women to serve in the military and wear the military uniform which as you would know more better than me it remains a dream for many because of uh, the number of vacancies which are there in each service i think that is a big plus uh, secondly uh, of course after 4 years it uh, brings all these uh, agnivirs having done their mandatory uh, training and performance to do a check for themselves as to whether uh, they fit in do they want to continue or do they want to pursue some other uh, vocation in this endeavor they are obviously being uh, supported by the government and by each service financially uh, i'm sure you must have read i don't want to repeat it but for the benefit of your uh, audience all those who don't know uh, what is going to happen is that uh, they will of course get fixed pay which is incremental every year it is going to increase from 30000 in first year to 40000 in the last year out of this uh, there is something called as agnivir uh, corpus fund uh, which is being created by the government and uh, Uh, 30% of their pay will go into that which is a saving for them but more importantly the government will uh, match that saving and therefore uh, and provide the interest on uh, that saving at the pf rates yeah. which is uh, substantial so at the end of uh, his four years or her four years each agnivir will uh, get a substantial package about in the form and of uh, seva nidhi uh, it is about 10 point uh, 10 odd lakhs with interest it is 11.71 lakhs it works out as on today and it is totally income tax free so that is financially a uh, thing but money is uh, you know uh, not everything uh, there are many tangible and intangible gains which these uh, young people who will leave uh, the armed forces from tw uh, at the age of 21 to 25 years depending on when they get in you know i cannot describe uh, the the kind of uh, uh, virtues the kind of uh, experience the kind of expertise uh, which these young people will uh, ingrain in themselves uh, some of these cannot be taught in cl classrooms sure. they cannot be learned in from books they have to be learned on job and what better way than to serve in the armed forces some of these uh, of course uh, tangible ones that they will be skilled they will be experienced uh, uh, they will be confident and uh, ready to face the world so to say but i am actually more interested in, in, in and then ready to join the uh, civil society and s become a model citizen but i am more actually interested in the intangible gains which, which these agnivirs will have uh, one is that uh, they will be they will learn the art of leadership they may, may have served only four years but they will they would have seen many leaders they will learn the art of leadership they will learn the uh, art Deep. of management skills how to manage the never say die attitude always giving their best team work cohesion you know n number of things which cannot be uh, described and cannot be taught in the classrooms again i repeat i feel that at the end of four years they will become better version of themselves both professionally and personally 
and all these tangible and intangible gains in my view will shape their personalities and thought process forever which is a gain for absolute gain for the society and the country wherever they serve thereafter it's a, it's a, it's a huge vista which is open why i say this because in my understanding this scheme is a whole of government whole of nation approach more and more uh, ministries are uh, chipping in true you must have read about uh, the uh, home minister himself i think uh, tweeting that uh, the agnivirs who will leave after four years CAPF. will be given preference in the capfs and the sm rifles the ministry of education has come in and of course uh, under the new education policy they will get credits maybe degrees as well uh, there are other ministries who are i think willing to help us ministry of shipping obviously for the navy we are very uh, we are in dialogue with them uh minister of civil aviation you name it uh depending on the trade uh, what these agnivirs carry or the specialty they carry i have a feeling that the not only the public sector but also the public uh, the private sector they will actually will should be queuing uh, both for the tangible and intangible qualities uh, these youngsters who carry who uh, who has got all the josh on the motivation and they have been uh, you know given this brief i would say a brief i am saying is because uh, of the overall uh, life span four years of concentrated uh, training and exposure and experience to remain focused to do their best and to serve the country talking about concentrated focus uh, admiral party you know how does can you explain to us how the agni veer policy sits with say the naval artificer policy yeah th so this has been an apprehension when we started this policy because uh, uh, it's a fact that uh, indian navy is a highly technologically intensive service uh, we operate high end weapons systems equipment whether it, it is the radar sonars e ew systems the uh, uh, g uh, gas turbines gas turbine generators and the works and therefore uh, Uh, we we obviously absolutely obviously require uh, uh, the manpower not only to operate them but more importantly maintain. to uh, maintain them because in the matter uh, or the Refuel. environment environment Refuel in which we which we operate them. so uh, that is a given that we we require uh, uh, high end uh, uh, trained manpower now what we have done is uh, since uh, uh, we uh, expected uh, this agni veers who come they will not may not be uh, that qualified sure. as you said about uh, to the level of artificers so we did some uh, study and we found that the uh, level of uh, technological competence required is actually graded so the so the boy or girl who joins today is not supposed to have the same level of competence sure. than somebody who has been in the navy for 5 6 7 10 years there is also uh, an existing scheme which is going on which is called navy artificer entry scheme under which uh, personnel from other trades can become artificers and mechanicians that is already a scheme which is going on so what we have done already preempted that to uh, offset the deficiencies which will be caused in the first few years we are going to increase the numbers under the nea scheme so my view is that uh, we should be able to manage the shortages which will be caused because we are not taking artificers uh, directly under agnipat scheme mm -hmm. once these uh, boys and girls uh, you know finish the four years then obviously the the field is open for them to become artificers and when you said boys and girls i think in, in my understanding at least among the other uh, services it's not been highlighted as much i i, I heard chief of naval staff during the press conference talk about women in agnivir i think the navy uh, it hasn't come out so much in focus what the navy is planning to do with women in agnivir if you could elaborate on that yes our um, uh, chief of the naval staff and we as a navy are very clear that uh, i think uh, time has come uh, to uh, give uh, equal opportunity to women to serve uh, on board our units uh, of course they have already already been officers for last 30 odd years 
but now time has come to uh, make them uh, capable to serve on board ships as uh, agniveers and then beyond after four years as well uh, this has been done after a lot of study that is what kind of platforms uh, they will go into what kind of facilities which are required uh, we may require a little bit of tweaking uh, in our uh, training methodology uh, training infrastructure uh, which is not uh, you know something which is uh, highly significant but it will require a little bit more important is uh, the change of mindset and that we have already started for last uh, couple of years that uh, this is going to happen so let us better prepare and i see no reason because the women have been as we speak there are 29 women officers at sea some some of them must be sailing in the high seas and we have had no issues at all so i feel that uh, once the agni beers uh, come and uh, of course a certain percentage of them will be women they should be able to uh, you know get on board the ships and uh, do what uh, the their male counterparts are doing so that is one area of focus for the navy is that correct i mean women agni beers i i would uh, i mean that, that is not the main focus one we, of them. yeah that is one of the main uh, one of the focus areas uh we of course are looking at uh, ensuring that these agni veers uh, male or female are trained well and uh, i am i am emphasizing on training because uh, of the changed circumstances so we we have we are recalibrating our training and uh, make sure that when they come on the ships that the fighting end of the navy uh, they are not found wanting would one of the reasons for uh, agnipath be financial in terms of the huge whether it's the pension or the revenue salary bill uh, is that one of the reasons cutting down costs you know i, I have also read this in uh, you know media but whatever uh, i know i don't think that has been the uh, main driving force you you would have read too and uh, i am aware that the uh, main aim of this uh, scheme is a little more higher than the financial it is like i said to give maximum uh, opportunity to more number of people more number of youth to uh, come into the armed forces serve for four years take a stop after four years uh, imbibe the uh, military ethos and uh, other qualities of self discipline uh camaraderie team work uh, selflessness uh, always doing your best remaining focused uh, adhering to diligence now these are the qualities which uh, again i uh, at the cost of repetition they cannot be taught in any classroom we have been students we know that all our all our life our teachers kept telling us but uh, those things come up when you go through situations and then you realize that there is always a way to get out of that situation mm. and that is when the true test of the character comes and i have no doubt that when uh, these uh, agniveers uh, come out out of four years the last thing i think they will be thinking is uh, i this scheme is because of saving the money some exchequer or it is uh, for my own good sure. after four years what uh, they will gain i have already enunciated Your previous question. Even if it's not the driving force for uh, the policy itself, if there is saving on that front, and we've seen that the cutting edge in terms of technology or defence acquisitions or capacity expansion, money that is needed uh, for the Indian Navy, since we're talking about that here, do you think there will be uh, more funds that can be allocated because of that? i think in the last two or three years uh, from the briefing uh, which you if you were heard that day yeah. uh, the government has already uh, provided uh, adequate funds in the cap for the capital budget not only the capital even the revenue budget uh, went up by a certain percentage uh, i have been uh, in the uh, plans for uh, yeah. six years uh, as a two star and one star and i can tell you that uh, at no point of time Uh, we felt there is a shortage of uh, any budget for the things which we wanted to do and uh, what we were told the, the other day that you now the jump has been huge 
सो सडनली दी केपेबिलिटी क्रिएशन ऑफ आर्म फोर्सेस विल बी वन ऑफ द प्राइम एम्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एंड द सर्विसेज एंड आई एम कॉन्फिडेंट दैट द रिक्विजिट फंड्स विल बी प्रोवाइडेड एज यू से इफ एनी नो मनी इज सेव बिकॉज ऑफ द स्कीम सडनली इट विल बी प्लाउड बैक टू इंश्योर दैट दी आर्म फोर्सेज बिकम यू नो मोर केपेबल and uh, ready to face challenges in any uh, domain you talked about various secretaries various ministries even the private sector you talked about ministry of shipping maybe civil aviation as well could you explain to us what is the position vis a vis say the coast guard are they also following this scheme or will they be taking the people who uh, will not get a permanent or regular commission say in the navy later Coast Guard is a very uh, dear service, very close service to the Navy. Sister. We operate. Uh, in fact, they are born out of the uh, yeah. the Navy, as you would know. Uh, we operate in the same medium. Uh, presently, I am not actually aware uh, whether okay. uh, this actually is, uh, scheme is for them. Uh, But it is uh, after, if necessary. I mean, if they are not following course, this, then of course, it's a, it's a perfect example. Like I, I think Coast Guard. Shipping. I think I think the Coast Guard will gain immensely by taking these uh, naval uh, Navy after four years. fully trained uh, you know all kinds of uh, you know domain and they will just fit in they are ready to go from uh, first day so sure. within the whole scheme as it stands now and of course like you're saying you will move along with the times and if you need to tweak certain policies but currently is are there any things that you see as challenges or you would have rather seen differently uh, challenges uh, i think the most important thing which uh, with every challenge you know also an opportunity you know it's a cliche so uh, certainly uh, one is of course the change management which i spoke about and uh, there, there what we plan we should be able to execute and execute it uh, for the uh, uh, betterment of the uh, organization that will unfold in next uh, you know 6 months to 4 years as i see you know 6 months because of the first uh, army will come and then they'll go through this and then the 4 years probably will get the first stock of situation as to sure. where we are but the way the organizations work and the way i can talk only about the navy uh, i do believe that uh, and i have great faith in the, the uh, naval leaders at all levels including at the you know unit and establishment level that they will rise to this challenge and uh, make sure that uh, uh, these agnivirs are taken care of and uh, uh, this this noble scheme is uh, taken to its logical conclusion and at the end of it uh, the navy the nation the agnivir the society and the larger industry must gain from this experiment that will be our aim and as i said uh, uh, the biggest challenge is how do we convert these uh, thought process and uh, vision into reality but uh, as i said at the beginning of your program i am an eternal optimist and i believe that what you can think you can do and uh, the naval leadership uh, at all levels is uh, is fully into it get together uh, i see a great future for this team talking about the future and being an eternal optimist and multipathy in 10 years where do you see the navy through this scheme crystal gazing is a little dangerous sure. uh, in a hobby but uh, i will make an effort as far as uh, uh, as far as the navy per se is concerned we are very clear where we want to be uh, uh, in terms of capabilities in terms of uh, the operational footprints in terms of human capital uh, what are the kinds of uh, domains which we want to uh, strengthen for which uh, we are the work is already in progress uh, what are the deficiencies which are there obviously the, that is a constant uh, that we want to plug those how to make people uh, do put in their best how to make them uh, you know happy t- happy part of the teams so all that Uh, is a given that is all that is known the only new thing which has come is uh, the agni weeds and i have already enunciated uh, what we are going to do after 4 years uh, f- uh, up to 4 years 
at some point of time certainly the number of agni veers which will join the navy will uh, may become three times from four times maybe uh, to maintain the numbers for that uh, we have to uh, create uh, additional training infrastructure so that will happen there is no doubt in my mind we will have to create downstream training facilities in our professional schools uh, i am sure that will also happen and at some point of time 10 years from now the percentage of agni veers so called agni veers not only the those four years variety but also the people who have graduated from four years will also become uh, their share will become uh, larger since we know that is going to happen since no we, we have time since our intent is very clear i think we should be able to tide over that and uh, make this scheme a success and mr patil thank you so much for sharing your experience and helping both us and the viewers who watch strat news global understand uh, the policy and how it will affect the navy thank you amta it was a pleasure talking to you pleasure is all ours sir. and on strat news global do send your feedback on this interview and the issue itself you've been watching the gist on strat news global i'm amita abrevi